saying goes, if you want it done right, you've got to do it yourself. As we prepare more and more citizens for the inevitable, the truth becomes clear. We can no longer afford to sit idle. As the world continues to decay, the need to be equipped becomes vital. We wrestle between freedom and comfort, complacency and calling. We resist the work to revive until the moment where we find we have no choice but to act. We are sovereign, capable, determined. No longer will we allow outside forces to direct our path. Our vision and purpose are driven by a higher calling. The equipment we offer prepares the modern minute man for his duty. Safeguards are built where freedom is resurrected. A symbiotic relationship between capable individuals and defense against tyranny. A movement of not one, but many. A collective, a community, called to uphold and defend. They couldn't keep up with us then, how could they keep up with us now? This journey started with me predator hunting and realizing the efficacy and importance of night vision and thermal gear for the prepared citizen. I quickly realized this was about far more than hunting. This is about creating safeguards against tyrannical forces and effectively protecting our rights in this nation. Because of this, we began to proliferate gear to the masses. We knew this gear, coupled with the proper mindset and training, could protect our human rights. We lined up suppliers and partners and began to work to fill the need our people had. The more we equipped our communities, the more we came to find that the current bridges on the market did not provide the adaptability people needed. We began trying to rally our suppliers around this new idea for a truly adaptable bridge, but it was to no avail. Nobody was willing to partner with us to solve these problems our customers were facing. Nobody stepped up, listened to our experiences, and offered solutions. We found ourselves in this situation where we had committed to equipping citizens, but on the other hand, realized no one was going to step up to the challenge to develop the bridge of our dreams. That was the moment we realized we had only one viable option, do what others wouldn't, and bring a bridge to the market that equips capable citizens. When you're creating a new product, you rarely get it right the first time. My favorite part of the creation process is the proof of concept, illustrating that a function can be completed in a new and innovative manner. The process becomes monotonous when we enter the phase of testing and revising repeatedly until we ultimately land on a product that fulfills our vision. If we are to put a customer's investment into our product, it needs to be solidified, proven, and reliable. Printing a product is not as easy as just buying a printer and hitting a button. There is a challenge involved in the process, a trial and error, from the way the parts are designed to the ultimate interface of them together. No detail can be left unexplored. Orientation of the parts on the table, the grain of the print, the forces exerted on the part, and the secondary processes required were hard fought and hard earned. I learned in my years of development that failure is essential. It is necessary to learn and grow and teaches us to improve. I must accept the reality that the first revision will never be the last. I need subject matter experts to critique my design and find where it fails. That gives me the data I need to improve my design and ultimately create a superior product. As the product engineer, it's my duty to bring our ideas to reality and discern which manufacturing processes could be used to bring superior products to our customers at a competitive price. We explored the possibilities of injection molding or machining the components, but immediately realized it would be prohibitively expensive for the end user. But after playing around with the 3D printed prototype, we all came to the conclusion that with some design tweaks and high quality filament, 
we can achieve impressive strength and value by printing them ourselves. This is the first product Arcane has invented, so it's been a struggle to build our manufacturing infrastructure in-house. I started by experimenting with different 3D printers and materials, the most popular types of printer material that you might be familiar with, like PLA, don't have the strength or heat resistance to withstand hard use. My nods and thermals cost me thousands of dollars, so I need a material I can trust. Nylon 12 carbon fiber is the answer. It's expensive, but it's tough as nails and extremely stable in a wide range of temperatures and environments. I built a print farm in our headquarters and began iterating on the initial prototype to add strength, rigidity, adjustability, and modularity. After many tweaks and adjustments, I finally built out a full suite of parts for universal optic compatibility. But the work doesn't stop there. Even after the designs were finalized, I still had to scale up the print farm to meet consumer demand, complete a full set of engineering drawings for our records, and work with our media team to make renderings and take photos of the symbiote in all its configurations. We've assembled it with every optic we have in inventory, in every combination conceivable. To be 100% certain, the symbiote is combat capable with any optic on the market. You are witnessing the start of a new arcane, a refined vision that is being executed. Defiant freedom begins when we realize that we hold the power to invoke real change in our world. Being equipped is not enough, and offering gear is not enough. This is a renewed commitment to a broader vision, one that encompasses manufacturing our own gear to build safeguards against tyranny. But products are not enough. A community of people is needed, one that is committed to the very end.